Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? You guys enjoyed Jeff's session? We're just uh, working on getting Mark in here. Mark Stevens in here. He should be uh, popping on any minute now. Any second now. Make sure he has the right link, eh? Well, uh, pop in the chat what your favorite session's been so far, what uh, you guys have learned from anybody, um, or maybe actually pop in the chat what you've learned and tell us from what speaker. That'd be uh, interesting and cool to hear. All right, question, Zach. Jess is now your new favorite. Ooh, I love that. Took the lead, took the lead. Nice. Ecotourism, super cool, huh, you guys? Love that. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Was it in here? Uh, yeah, it's right there. Uh, it's in here. I just I just think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Well, uh, while we're, we're trying to on, uh, yeah. get him in here, let's see. Anything or? Yeah, I like uh, the minimal minimal East designs are amazing. They're just so clean, and uh, I don't know, they have really thoughtful details that they put in there. Um, you know, even just like that cabinet one is pretty cool. The cabinet, uh, magnet. Let's see. Yeah, the decluttering session with Aaron, super good. Yeah, she has a wealth of knowledge for sure. Awesome. Yeah, all of it. So yeah, yeah. We got, you know, we still have what? We've got another like five hours of today's sh session still, I think, four or five hours. So we're still uh we're still cooking. We got a lot of good stuff ahead. We got um let me just take a quick peek at our agenda here. Zach's gonna call Mark Stevens real quick, get him on, but after this one, we have uh tiny easy guys over uh in New Zealand. And let's see some of the other uh, highlights here. We got another ecotourism with Matt. And then we have Jay Schaefer and Lindsey Wood and the one and only Nick Mosley from California Tiny House right after that. And then we'll jump into networking. So we got a solid, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five more sessions. So we're ready. Oh, you oh Mark's here. Okay. What email? I see him right here, actually. You, Zach. Okay, here we go. We're just going to give you um, panelist. He's as an attendee right now. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Mark is in the session, but as an attendee, we're gonna we're gonna promote, promote you. him to pay All right, us. thanks, Mark. We'll see you in a second. Just here we go. All right. Woo! That's right. Welcome to the party, Mark. I like that cricket. Mark, it looks like you're joining as a panelist. There yeah, we are. There we are. And uh, you got to turn your mic on now. There we are. All right, talk and we'll tell you if we can hear you. Right on. Can you hear me? You sure, sure can. can. All right. right. We'll let you take it away from here and uh, super excited for your session. Okay. Well, let me get my uh, PowerPoint fired up here. Perfect. Okay, here we go. I guess you guys could see this. Um, hope everybody's had a good day and had a lot of good sessions. Sounds like it. Um, welcome to Off Grid Tiny Home Living. So my partner and I, Lisa, we live off grid 
in a remote Northwest Nebraska. If anybody's ever seen Dances with Wolves, it was filmed about 40 minutes from here, from where uh, we live, um, two people per square mile. So we've been living off grid for about a decade and a half now. Um, we've been working in the renewable energy field since uh, 2008. I attended uh, the Midwest Renewable Energy Association and Solar Energy International. I took a lot of my solar uh, classes, learned how to, um, to install solar and wind systems. And in uh, 2014, I kind of changed things up and I went to work with uh, Medicine Sans Frontières uh, Doctors Without, Without Borders, uh, MSF. I did that for almost almost five years. Uh, I was a logistician. I installed solar. I trained folks, uh, met a lot of cool people. Um, I installed my first Victron energy system in North Sudan in Khartoum in 2016. Uh, when I got done doing that, um, came back to the States, and in 2019, I became a uh, Victron ambassador and trainer. And basically, what that is, I go around, talk about my favorite subject, uh, living off-grid, and uh, some of my favorite equipment, uh, Victron energy equipment. So uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, what it's like to live off grid, what it's like to get geared up, uh, what you can ex somewhat expect. Um, so we'll keep on rolling. So living off grid. So uh, in our experience, you know, living off grid, um, it's definitely a, a unique learning experience. Uh, we've had to uh, rethink, relearn uh, quite a few things like uh, modifying our habits. We can't leave lights on. Uh, we can't do everything we want all the time. Um, we live with a resource, meaning that if the sun is shining, uh, we can do some work with that. We do what we call opportunity loads. We, if the sun is shining, we can heat water. We can turn on the mini split. We can use it for heating or cooling. We can pump water with that excess that we're blessed with. And another thing is, is kind of understanding the system. So we kind of, uh, we wake up in the morning and look at the weather, see if the sun is going to be shining. And if it is, we can kind of plan, plan our day. Uh, we know, we also know the limitations of our system as well. So we know we can't turn everything on all at the same time, uh, but it's kind of fun. Um, Lisa and I really enjoy, uh, it's a challenge. It's, it's a beautiful way to get back in touch with the rhythm of nature. And uh, it's something that we, we really cherish. So we're gonna be going over the parts of our system um, that kind of make up our system, the things that we need to harvest energy, to store that energy, and then take it out of storage and use it to run the lights or run a blender or a microwave, a mini split, or an induction hot plate. So this here, uh, with, with my pointer, um, hopefully you can see that uh, the multi plus um, here is an inverter charger. You know, probably already know what these are, the solar panels. We have batteries, we have a solar charge controller, and we have part of our monitoring system uh, that we use because we wanna be in touch with how much it's making so we can adjust our habits to that. So the inverter charger, so it changes DC power from the, from the batteries into usable AC power. So DC power is direct current. Direct current is like a, a the battery in our car. You know, when we had to have to jump a car, the battery, we have a positive and a negative. And that's what 
that's basically how we store. We cannot store AC power or alternating current. We have to store it as DC power and then take it back out and transfer it to alternating current, which is found in most of our homes, the outlets um, that we plug in different appliances. That is AC power or alternating current. So this magic box also changes AC power from the grid or a generator. So we use a generator, we're, we're miles from the grid. We use that generator to charge the battery. So this thing can run backwards. It can take AC power from our uh, generator or if we're living in someone's backyard and we're, we're using their electricity, we can charge our batteries from the grid using their electricity. So, and then this on the bottom, we have a power distribution. So we have a box underneath that everything interfaces with. So we're gonna bring in our battery cables into that. It gives us circuit breakers because we want safe, reliable systems. So we wanna put circuit breakers over current protection in this. So we wanna make it super safe, super robust. So our battery cables would come into this. Our solar panels would come into this box here. Um, we would, um, our AC out that goes to our breaker panel for our house would come out of here and coming from the generator would come into here as well. So that's your power distribution panel. This is where all the sources of energy are coming in and going out and being, um, you know, being as safe as we can with circuit breakers. So photovoltaic or PV, that's what we call solar panels. So photovoltaics, PV, is the conversion of light into electricity. So like looking at this, uh, one of our tiny home customers that made a tiny home out of a container, um, he's got, I can see here, he's got six modules, PV modules, or we can call them PV panels, but uh, basically, they're, technically, they're a PV module. So we have six of those there. And they're glass, they're monocrystalline or polycrystalline. And uh, we can put those at different, uh, different tilts. Uh, but basically, we want them to be as cool as we can. We don't want them right up against things. Uh, because when the panel was produced, let's say those were 400 watt panels, um, they were tested in the factory. They put them on their back and they flashed them with a light. And that light was measured in a thousand watts per meter square of light. Some smart folks came up with that that is perfect light. So they flashed it at, and the temperature around there was 25 degrees C or 77 degrees. So when they flashed it at that temperature, they said, oh, this makes, this is a 400 watt panel. So when we have it out on our homes, if the panel is warmer than 25 C or 77 degrees, it's gonna have less volts, which means it's going to produce less because we can actually produce more energy in the winter time when the panels are cooler than we can in the summer, even though the summer has longer sun hours during the day. Okay, and to, we use the solar charge controller. So the, the new, new type of out has been out for uh, 10 years is the maximum power point tracking or MPPT solar charge controller. And it, con it converts the PV module power to fill the batteries in a controlled manner. So it, it's going to put in the batteries exactly what it needs in, in a safe way. So that is one of the major components of our system. We have the inverter charger, we have the solar panels, we have the solar charge controller that takes that energy and puts it into the batteries. And then we can take that energy out of the batteries with our inverter charger. So we have different types, shapes, and capacity of batteries. So when we started out in the business uh, in 2008, we hadn't had maybe heard of lithium somewhat. That was what was in our phones, but it definitely was not affordable. 
So the only thing that we had was a lead acid batteries. So the one on the right, AGM is absorbed glass mat. That means a sealed battery. So it's, it's safe. It's doesn't off gas. It does, you don't have to fill water, fill it up with water or anything like that, but it's still a lead acid battery. It's heavy. It adds weight to things. Um, but in the last couple of years, lithium phosph iron phosphate, the safer type of lithium batteries have, um, have become more affordable, quite a bit more affordable. And with the nice thing about lithium is you, you can take them all the way down to, to nothing. You can from 100% down to 0%. With a lead acid battery, we can't do that. We can do that, but it's not going to last too long. So we usually take it from 100% down to 50% back and forth. So we only really get, we can only use the top half of that battery in AGM. So it's the nice thing about lithium is we can go all the way down and we can get a lot more cycles. So with a lithium battery, you could probably get five to 8,000 cycles from 100% down to 50% or nothing. We can do that 8,000 times. With a lead battery, we can only do that about a thousand times or less. So even though AGM batteries or lead acid batteries are cheaper, uh, they're not going to last as long. And in the long game, the lithium are going to be, um, they're going to make the most sense financially. So there's different shapes. There's the square looking ones uh, like we have here, uh, here and here, like in a golf cart or in your car. But now they came out with these new, it seems to be a, a new thing, uh, these rack style batteries that uh, that stack on each other. They take up a smaller footprint, so you can really put things in uh, where you don't have to take up a lot of room uh, wiring all these uh, other kinds of batteries together. Where you have one footprint and then you just go up from that. I would say these are probably two foot square by about 10 inches thick. And then we have our monitoring. So we'd like to know what's going on with a um, with our system because that helps us uh, utilize our system to its fullest potential. Um, Victron has a nice touch screen um, that you can have inside of your kitchen or your living room where you can touch screen. You can see everything that's going on. You know, uh, like here where it says shore, that means shore power, or that's from a generator. Uh, we can see our, our battery, uh, how many percent, you know, it's like a gas gauge. We can see that it's 95% full. Our AC loads, that's the things that we're running, uh, that we have plugged in. And then we have our PV charger. That's our photovoltaic. That's how much solar we're making. So we can see this at the, um, right at a glance. So the Servo GX is what, it's the magic box that brings in all the pieces of equipment that get plugged in, our solar charge controller gets plugged in, our batteries get plugged into there, our inverter charger gets to plugged into there. We can set up Bluetooth um, sensors for temperature called Ruby tags. We can see temperatures of different places in the house of where our batteries are at. So these are all, all good for information that we really need to understand our, our system to be able to utilize it to its fullest potential. So here's our system, uh, Chickadee Ridge in Nebraska. Like I said, we live in the Pine Ridge Forest. Uh, so that's, that's where we call home. So this is a screenshot of our system. And this is something that I can see on the Victron remote monitoring. So I can see this information from anywhere in the world. At the moment, I'm in Golden, Colorado, doing some training as an ambassador trainer. And I can see my system, exactly what it's doing how much energy it's putting in um, and how many, how many, how much loads I have, you know, what's turned on. I can really glean a lot of information of what's going on in my house, just based on what I'm seeing here. And I can also see the different temperatures through that Servo GX that I had these uh, Bluetooth remote uh, tags that I can see different things. So I can see the, my shop where we have our system. Uh, the temperature inside and outside the shop. And it's very important to me on the batteries because lithium batteries cannot 
you cannot charge them when it's below freezing. So I want to make sure that my batteries are not at freezing because I'm, I'm, I'm unable to give them a charge. I need to get them heated up again before I can charge them. So that's one of the drawbacks from lithium. Um, but uh, it's something that we can, we can mitigate. With this Victron remote monitoring or the VRM, I can see historical data. I can see that last month, that or this month I've had the generator on and I had, I produced 13 kilowatt hours from the generator. So it was a day I can see in green. I can see when my generator was on. I can see the consumption. This is what we're pumping water. We have a heater, we have a induction hot plate, hot water heater, things like that are gonna show up as consumption. And then I can see here how much solar energy I made, 216 kilowatt hours. So um, it's really nice to see all this data and to, to be able to do things with it. So system config, uh, considerations. So space is a huge thing. So living in a tiny space like Lisa and I do, we live in a small space. Our stuff's in our shop, but um, you know we've worked with other uh, tiny home builders about you know space allocation is is a premium in a small home or a small space. So space is, and where you're going to put that, you know, you can either put it in within your, around your living space in like a closet kind of deal or off behind your uh, tiny home, things like that. So consideration, we need one to know our loads. What's, what's turned on, you know, um, and how much we use really need to kind of nail that and nail that down because that information is going to let us um, size our battery. So we need to know how much battery we need to cover these loads. You know, I've got an induction hot plate that uses a thousand watts. I have it on for one hour a day. So I can see right there, that's 1000 watt hours or one kilowatt hour a day that I need to design for just to run my induction hot plate. And then we need to figure out our system voltage. So like in our cars, it's 12 volt. Um, 24 volt is becoming more common. And 48 volt to me, it makes the most sense. 48 volts, I could, my wires can be smaller. I can add more solar. Um, so it just makes sense that uh, 48 volts uh, as your battery voltage, your nominal battery voltage is what considerations of when we're designing it. Is it going to be at 12, 24, or 48? Um, and are we going to build this to a mobile ele electrical standard, like an RV? Is, is this considered an RV, or is it considered a, a stationary home that I might want to do the National Electric Code? So these are all good questions that we need to ask uh, about how we build it, because if I build it something for an RV, I would build it to a mobile electrical standard, which is gonna be a lot different than a stationary electrical best practices. Uh, mobile uses fuses and stationary uses circuit breakers like in our home. So these are all things that we need, need to think about. Some other considerations is how much PV, how much solar do we put on? To me, it's putting on as much as you can. Um, and then what, what's the orientation? So, you know, a little bit about solar, you know, the sun in the Northern hemisphere, we want them pointing South. And if we're on the other side of the equator, we want them pointing North. That's where the sun is going to be, but it's okay. If, you know, how are you going to orient your, your tiny home for the, for the solar or for the views, things like that, you know? So if you had a gable roof, uh, and it was east-west, to me, that's optimal because you, you can catch the east. We can, the sun comes up in the morning. Um, when the sun comes up in the morning and midday and then the, the west slope, you are uh, cap capturing it in the evening. So you just put two separate charge controllers on and you're capturing that all the way through the day. So the optimal position if I had to choose and it was I had a gabled roof 
would be an east-west orientation. Okay, we, um, you know, we talked about sizing our system and knowing our loads. So this is something that we give our customers. It's an Excel spreadsheet and we can list all the different loads that we have um, and we can see how long they're going to be on during the day. So basically, if it's a toaster or a refrigerator, let's say this refrigerator, and we look at the ID plate on the back of it and we see that it takes 2.7 amps. And we're gonna convert that to watts because volts times amps is watts. So we're gonna go through this, how many hours a day it's going to be on a refrigerator. You know, it's not on all the time, it cycles on and off. And we can see all these different things like a mini split that we can, an inverter DC based mini split is the best thing that the tiny home world has seen in my neck of the woods for heating and cooling off grid because it is so efficient. A 9,000 BTU mini split uses 600 watts to cool and about 800 watts to heat. So they're just amazing um, devices that uh, really help us uh, be comfortable. So this is, if you guys wanted a, a spreadsheet, you could always contact us at uh, info at tinyhomepower.com. We could send you this and this would help you size your, your system. So we're looking for this, uh, how many kilowatt hours we're going to use during the day and try to cover that with the batteries. So um, batteries uh, or about five kilowatt hours a piece. Some of the ones that I showed you in that other slide, the lithium, they're increments of five kilowatt hours. So to cover that, I'd need four batteries. Now I know I need four batteries to cover my load. Now we're talking price. Um, you know, how much does it cost? Um, well, what we see from a system like the one with the with the cool looking dog there um, is about five grand for a quality system. That's kind of what we're looking at. Um, you know, you could probably get a lot cheaper than that, but to me, it's like a good pair of boots. You know, um, what you get, what you pay for is what you get. And I really found that the Victron stuff is just very robust and very long lived. So you can get all the way up to 20 grand. Uh, depending on how big you need. So this, you know, if you needed 240 volts, meaning line one and line two, you'd need two inverter chargers. Um, solar, solar, solar panels are about a dollar a watt. So a hundred watt panel, you know, is a hundred dollars. A 400 watt panel is $400. So you can kind of get, uh, you know, uh, figure out how much, you need how much solar you can put on your roof and assign a dollar a watt to it. And that's about what you're going to look at for purchasing it and, um, and mounting it on the roof. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Hey, uh, I hate to interrupt, but um, if you don't mind wrapping it up and then we're sure. going to go to the next session. Um... Um, but we have... Sure. So a dollar a watt, uh, when I got into the business, it was $8 a watt in 2008. Um, the batteries we're looking at anywhere from $300 to $700 per kilowatt hour. So um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I guess as anybody has any questions, um, now's a good time. Anything out there on the chat that you could uh, relay to me? Yeah, there's quite a few good questions. Um, but the only thing is we're, we're a little over time. So I think we're gonna have to jump to Till's uh, session that starts right now as well. But I think we should, uh, looks like there's enough people totally into this i think we should just plan on doing a workshop here in the next month or two together and do a nice hour or two uh session 
But Mark, sure. really appreciate your time. Super, super amazing presentation. Lots of helpful information. Really appreciate it. Right on. Right on. Well, thanks, thanks. guys. Have Thank a good you, day. Mark.